Okay, so this must be like the fourth time I'm redoing this video because stupid green screen for hasn't been working as it should be. So here's the last time that I'm going to try to do this until I go nuts. So quantifiers and proof of theorems. Now we have two statements here. And the first statement is if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it has four equal angles. Second statement is if a quadrilateral has four equal angles, then it's a rectangle. Now, Px represents x as a rectangle, and Qx represents x as four equal angles. Our first screen symbolic definition here is for every x, if x is a rectangle, that would imply that x has four equal angles. Our second statement, for every x, if x has four equal angles, then that would imply x is a rectangle. Now, these are converses. They're generally not logical equivalent, but when we have them both, when we have qx implies px and px implies qx then we can we can get this symbolic definition both are using implication with biconditional so they both mean ax px is biconditional to qx that is if x is a rectangle then x is four equal angles if x has four equal angles then x is a rectangle so another way of saying this is a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four equal angles okay so that's all fine and dandy, but what the heck am I getting at? Well, what I'm getting at is I'm just trying to show you that if we have Px implies Qx and Qx implies Px, we could just use the biconditional to express these two statements. Moving on. For every integer n, we call n even if it is divisible by 2. So Pn represents n as an integer, and Qn represents n as divisible by 2. So we call n even if it's divisible by 2. So pretty much what I was saying is if n is divisible by 2, that implies that n is even. So that's what we have here. This symbolic definition, qn, implies pn. That is what appears to be a symbolic definition. But actually, what we really intended to interpret this as is that for every n, qn implies pn and pn implies qn. That is, if n is an even integer, then n is divisible by 2. If n is divisible by 2, then n is an even integer. So, in other words, for every integer n, we call n even if and only if n is divisible by 2. So, here's the warning tape. Beware of implications being misread. When it is really meant to be a biconditional, we could replace this if with if and only if. So, what they really did here is we shorthanded if and only if with just the word if. So you gotta watch out for that. Exhaustive listing, the definition of that is just for doing proofs via the method of exhaustion. It's reasonable with small universes, and what you're trying to do is exhaust all possibilities. So for example, if I gave you a universe of uh, just a die, a roll of a die, which gave us six events, then you could use a method of exhaustion if I give you a random statement for that, uh, for that, for that universe, and you could use that universe of six, or you could exhaust every every possibility, which is only six because the die has six sides. So that's pretty much it. You're exhausting all your possibilities to prove the validity of the statement. If you're trying to go uh, do this with integers, then I suggest you stop immediately because integers are infinite, and it'll take you an infinite amount of time to go through it because that's not feasible and if you're given a universe of integers then method of exhaustion is pretty much useless. Moving on, the rule of universal specification if an open statement is true for all replacements by the members in a given universe then that open unit statement is true for each specific individual member of that universe. So what I'm trying to say is if Px is an open statement for a given universe and if Ax Px is true so for every x in that universe, px, that statement is true, then pa, with a being just some arbitrary element in that universe, pa is true for each a in the universe. To go through an example, let's, see, let's assume that we have a universe of all people. Now mx is, it represents x in a math block, and cx represents x as studied calculus. Now our first argument is all math profs have studied calculus. The one is math prof. Therefore, they only have studied calculus, so that's the argument that we're trying to prove, or verify, or, yeah, verify. So we're trying to establish the validity of this argument. The first statement here, all math profs have studied calculus. What we're trying to do is this. 
AX MX is a math prof that implies CX that they have studied calculus and this is given so we just write a premise Leona is a math prof so we're going to use L to represent so Leona, to represent Leona so ML so plug in L for Leona L is a math prof Leona is a math prof that's another premise that's given so given that we know that ML implies CL so that implies that from this statement with Leona being the arbitrary person in the universe Leona is a math prof that will imply that she has studied calculus so that's step one using step one and the rule of universal specification we verified or verified that statement specification so given that we're using it we're gonna this will give us CL so therefore we want to ask study calculus so this is step two and three and that is because we are using the rule of detachment or that's pretty much what is ponens uh, Leona is a math prof, right? So that will give us. So if Leona is a math prof, then from the universal specification, she must have studied calculus. So therefore, she's uh, Leona has studied calculus. Rule of detachment, modus ponens. So I actually hope you learned something today. Uh, things to remember: rule of universal specification. Uh, that you should be aware of the wording in the questions because they might not appear to be what they really are. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.